Welcome back. You're watching the Jacksonville History Show. I'm Harry Reagan. Now we welcome the one and only Dr. Wayne Wood to talk about Hemming Park. Harry, it's a pleasure to be here today. Thank Wayne, you. Good to have you. And a great topic. Uh, it is now Park, not Plaza. It's gone through various names. And uh, it, it's as old as the city of Jacksonville, basically. Well, almost. it is. And uh, Isaiah DeHart, the founder of Jacksonville, always intended for what is now Hemming Park to be a public square. Mm -hmm. He died in 1861, and within five years, his heirs had given it to the city. I say given it to him, they sold it to him for $10. <laughs> And so since that Even time... Even then, $10 wasn't that much. $10 wasn't that much. Yeah. So it was, it was called first City Park. And then uh, let's look at some slides and just go through the history. Sure, and, and we want to save a, a minute or so to talk about what's going on now, yeah. which is exciting. But let's go to the slides. Let's go back and see where it started. The, the idea of City Park was the, in the minds of the founders of the city. And uh, by the 1870s, it was beginning to be planted with trees and shrubs and uh, big hotels began to spring up around the park. Mm -hmm. The main of which was Saint, the St. Saint James Hotel, which was the grand edifice in all of Jacksonville. And the park quickly took over the name of St. James Park to go with this grand hotel where the royalty of, of Europe and the rich people all across the United States came to spend their winter vacation. The St. James Hotel was a four-story, uh, structure that went through many different additions, but uh, it was fronted on this park where people played croquet and the strains of the St. James Orchestra could be heard and on a winter evening. It was where uh, City Hall is today? It's now where City Hall yeah. is today. Okay. Uh, the, the hotel, though, was known throughout uh, the eastern United States and was uh, certainly the most striking uh, building in all of Jacksonville at that time, and it's where people came to congregate where people had their meetings and gatherings. Next door to that where the Skyway is today was the Windsor Hotel, which was also a great hotel which took up a whole city block. Mm -hmm. uh, and it uh, became a rival for the St. James, but also was just part of the great tourist boom that Jacksonville experienced during the 1870s. And so the park became the city center. It was beautifully landscaped with fountains, and uh, shrubbery and trees, and it's where people came to do all kinds of events and to celebrate weddings and occasions. And it's also where uh, great parades uh, centered around. Here you see the Windsor Hotel in the background with uh, 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 one of the parades for some military celebration going on down uh, Hogan Street. And uh, politicians made speeches? and Politicians made speeches, yeah. and we'll come back to that yeah. theme during this program. And there were fountains and uh, different uh, amenities in the park. There was a band shell at one time. Mm -hmm. But in 1898, the most signature structure in the park came about. It was the Confederate monument that was placed right in the center. And uh, it was uh, s quite some uh, celebration to have a, a sculpture of this uh, category in the middle of our city. And uh, it then became sort of the memorial that named the park later Hemming Park, after, here you see an ad for the monument company that built it, the Muldoon Monument Company, hmm. and it was uh, donated by a Confederate uh, general named Charles Hemming, whom the park soon was named after and remains named to this day. Uh, during the Great Fire of Jacksonville in 1901, just two years after the, the monument was built, uh, most of downtown Jacksonville was destroyed uh, and people who lived downtown uh, brought their possessions to Hemming Park trying to hopefully get them away from the blaze and the burning buildings and through the smoke the statue of Hemming Park, the Hemming Park Monument, hmm. could still be seen through the smoke and actually one commentator said it glowed red, the granite shaft glowed red from the heat but it was still standing after the fire was over. In fact, all those people who had piled their possessions around it, that, those possessions, of course, caught fire and burned, and so they had nothing left. And for days after the fire, there were looters going through the, the refuse and rubble of the fire trying to find coins and whatever might have survived the blaze. 
But nonetheless, the, the monument withstood the blaze, one of the few structures in downtown that's still there from before the fire, and has been the centerpiece of uh, celebrations and uh, different activities in the park. Here you see a lovely shot with the monument on the left, the Windsor Hotel, which was rebuilt after the fire. The Saint, this is the new, new Windsor. This was built, rebuilt within six months after the fire, the edifice of that size. The St. James Hotel was never rebuilt, and that lot remained vacant for a long time. And craftily, the owners of the new Windsor Hotel purchased that lot mm -hmm. so that no rival hotel would go back in close proximity to their enterprise. And so for years uh, after the fire, Hemming Park was there with only the Windsor being the major building facing it. And here you see a lovely shot showing what I think was probably the most beautiful landscaping version of the park. The park has gone through many uh, iterations and had different appearances. It has indeed. But I think this one during the early 1900s with lots of grass and winding sidewalks with beautiful oak trees was mm. one of its most beautiful uh, appearances. Yes. And so soon uh, as time went by, people just came there to hang out and to, uh, here's a picture of two gals with their pet raccoon at, uh -huh. the, at the park, just showing some of the beautiful scenes of this, uh, these early days. In 1908, 1909, the Cohen brothers, who had a large department on Bay Street, decided to purchase that lot from the Windsor Hotel owners, and not being a hotel, the Windsor Hotel was glad to sell it to them, and they built the ninth largest department store in the United States, the great Cohen Brothers store that fronted on Hemming Park and was designed by the renowned architect Henry Clutho, and today remains not only as our city hall after the department store closed, but it is also the largest prairie style building in the United States. Mm -hmm. And here you see some scenes with people gathering in the park, uh, some large gatherings, political rallies, all kinds of things took place in that park. And here you see an aerial view. In the center left, you see the old band shell, of which there were two or three different ones, but this is the one that most people remember with the metal dome on it. That was taken out sometime in the 70s. And here you see more scenes of the beautiful trees. Ironically, in the early 1950s, they had a, a, quite a lot of trouble with birds. Starlings would come and land in the trees, and because of the refuse falling on people below, in the early 1950s, they cut down every single tree in the park, which was the only remedy they could find to get rid of the starlings. My goodness. And of course, uh, that was a disaster in <laughs> itself. But the trees have grown back, and uh, we now see the uh, park in the 50s in this picture with the Windsor and the St. James. And uh, here you see another picture going into the 70s when the St. James building no longer was, it was a department store, but they remodeled the first floor making it quite ugly. And uh, that was remedied when the city took over the building as the city hall for Jacksonville. And here you just see the, the demeanor of the park. Throughout the years, people would come and sit in the park on their lunch hour, children would play in the park, uh, it was an all-around center of the city where people came to celebrate and to, uh, to gather for various occasions. Here you see a huge gathering uh, in the park with people standing on top of the St. James Building and a huge American flag. Perhaps this was for Armistice Day or some other military celebration. And here you see one of the largest gatherings ever in the park. This was when Dwight D. Eisenhower came for his campaign hmm. to, uh, uh, for presidency and there were said to be over 10,000 people in the park. And here you see him gather just to catch a glimpse of Ike, the famous general, mm -hmm. standing on top of the St. James Building, looking down, the streets were full, and here's where Eisenhower gave his great speech. He was not the first president to speak in the park because Franklin Delano Roosevelt had spoken there, Teddy Roosevelt had spoken there, and soon after uh, Eisenhower, we had the amazing day in history of the park where, pre where presidential candidate Richard Nixon spoke in the park in the morning, and then that afternoon, uh, John Kennedy came to the park and gave a resounding speech just within about five hours after uh, Nixon had finished his speech. Hmm. And the park is, is not always filled with pleasant memories. This was the center of uh, some of the civil rights unrest. Morrison's, which was across the street from the park, a mm -hmm. cafeteria, was where they had big protests and sit-in. 
And then in the 60s, there was the infamous day called Axe Handle Saturday, which uh, centered around the park where right. there was uh, tremendous violence uh, with whites and blacks and uh, began the uh, long civil rights unrest that gradually resolved itself in the park. Mm -hmm. But the park is still there today, and, and it is still the city center. But in recent years, it has fallen into less than ideal condition. Uh, in 19, in 1978, I believe it was, the park was turned from a green space into a plaza with bricks and paving. And it uh, has become, over the years, a place where jobless and homeless people hang out. Litter uh, has filled the park. And so uh, a remedy was sought, and the city in recent years has uh, decided to give management of the park to a nonprofit group called the Friends of Hemming Park. It's a nonprofit group that took over the management last year. This, this is an exciting new chapter for Hemming Park, and uh, I'm still likely to make that mistake and call it a plaza. But, uh, well, it still is a plaza, but yeah. the name Friends of Hemming Park denotes yeah. the fact that we're going to eventually turn it back into a park, make it more green space. And our goals for the park are many. Uh, there are, there, the park has a reputation of being unsafe and unsavory, and uh, that's partly that's mostly true and inaccurate. partly myth. Part, mostly uh, mostly perception. There, there have yeah. been a lot of homeless people who hang out in the park, but most of the people who are in the park each day are not homeless. There are many jobless people. And part of our goal is to make people who come to the park feel safe, mm -hmm. to make it family friendly, to make it an enjoyable space. And so by, we, we've done a number of things to already begin this initiative. One is to put in movable furniture so that people who want to come and hang out, we can direct where they hang out so they're not uh, blocking people's way to get through the park. We have a new set of rules that bans panhandling, uh, drinking, gambling, uh, drugs, and all the things that have given the park an unsavory reputation. So in very short order, we've just had custody of the park for a few months, and we've already made a big change in the park. We have now a cafe in the park. We have musical entertainment almost every day. There are children's activities, and there are uh, all kinds of events we have coming up that is going to once again make Hemming Park the center of Jacksonville, our town center, our place to gather and hold special events. And at least one member of your staff uh, is there to help the uh, homeless, jobless, whatever. Yes. Uh, counseling and, uh, and so forth. Uh, we had an article in the Times Union recently ab about um, mm -hmm. our uh, social services worker. One of our goals is to find services for those people who need uh, help and to get get them a place to live, a job, a food to eat. And so uh, uh, our social services workers made a big impact on finding a place for some of these people to go. But that's just one of the many elements that we're bringing to the park, uh, bringing art, excitement, food, entertainment, events that will bring hundreds of people and have already. We've had thousands of people come to the park for various events in the two short months we've had management of it. But we have only done about five or ten percent of the things we sure. have in mind. Uh, it, we know uh, that uh, when you have Art Walk, people say over and over, if only this could happen more often. Well, now it's about to happen more often. It is happening it is more happening. often and yeah. we appreciate the, the um, confidence that the city council and the city administration and the downtown merchants have given us to take this over. Mm -hmm. And it's a daunting task and we, we still have a long way to go, but we're in the process of raising more money to bring new amenities and events to the park. And uh, I think anyone who's not been downtown in a long time, if they'll come by and see what Hemming Park looks like today, they'll be astonished. And as we have these big events, more and more people are going to be forced to come there just to see what in the heck we have up our right. sleeve and what we're going to do next. Well, uh, Dr. Wayne Wood, thank you for being here and uh, congratulations on your work on Hemming Park. Thank you, Harry. We'll have you back again on some other topic, no doubt. I look forward to it. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching the Jacksonville History Show and for more information, visit the website, jackshistory.com or call 665-0064. And until next time, we're history.